So this is about Tesla turbines and how they work. Tesla turbines were made a long time ago. They were the pinnacle of the 1900s. In the early 1900s, the world witnessed the rise of piston engine in automobiles. But this technology was still in, this, in its infant, infancy. And combustion engines were anything but reliable. In an attempt to compete with the increasingly popular piston engine, Nikola Tesla, one of the most influential figures in history, developed an efficient list or efficient bladeless turbine in 1904. Tesla sincerely believed that his turbine would not only offer higher efficiency, but also lower pr production cost than any other tur engine or turbine. This right here is a turbine. This was made in 1873. It's a steam power turbine. And to give a comparison, this is about as big as five of your cars stacked on all on top of each other. Or about as big as your house. Maybe even bigger than your house. This worked on a principle of this. There was steaming steam coming through this inlet and it pushed it pushed this little rotor forward or backwards. This worked on the principle that steam would push this rotor. And this was obviously in a vacuum, of course. But the problem was that, as you guys can see, this steam can easily escape. For example, the steam after it goes through and spins it, the steam can come up and escape. Like you can see here. This was done in order to not prevent the steam from completely overflowing and heating up the thing. So this all steam, all this steam was wasted energy. So Nikola Tesla came up with something else. This was a bit about as big as your desktop or a computer monitor. That's seriously how big it was. And it produced the same energy as that one on the left. With the same amount of steam, of course, this one was way smaller, way more efficient, and produced the same horsepower, or torque. Well, how exactly did it work? Well, this is simple. This is the efficiency of Tesla's turbine. And as you can see, for the early 1900s, this was very efficient. So... It was really simple. These are like hard drive disks. And so as something f f spills, spins, or if air is put on it, something like this, if air is put on it, it would spin. For example, this is an inlet. And as air goes through it, it will make it spin. You will see this in the next one. So if you guys know what a blade is, if, if like an airplane, if the wing or if the airplane is going faster and faster, it rises. Why? This is because, for example, as air passes through under it, it would make the blade lift because that's how it works. Since something is blocking it, the air wants to get to, to the other side, as seen here. But in order to do that, it needs to bypass this blade. So in order to go over, it can either go over it or under it. And most of the air, as you can see, will just go under it because it's easier. Going down is easier than going up for the air. So that means that this is all wasted energy, but or wasted air. But this is how this is almost the only way planes can fly, since nobody else has discovered anything. But in summary, this is a general way of how it works. Something is pushed upon it. And as it pushes it, it makes the thing move. So this is another way of how it works. This is an inlet or a turbine inlet. This it was really simple. As you guys can see, there's air going through it. And what do you think will happen? The air wants to get out, right? Because that's how it works. Because it's getting pushed by air, 
the air has to get out since that's how air works. The air doesn't want to be trapped. It wants to get out. Or in other words, how much, for example, if there's, I don't know, density of air inside here is way higher than the density of the outside air. So what will happen? The air wants to get out. Kind of like this. If there's room, and there's supposed to be five people in that room, but instead of five people, there's ten people. So the ten people want to get out, since for some reason they're in that room. That was meant for five people. So they're all squished together. So they try to find an opening or a door. That's kind of how this works. This air, or this steam, is being put in a room that's only meant for five people. Basically ten people. I'm five people. So this air wants to get out. So in order to do that, it needs to find a door. And this is the door or the hole. So because it's being pushed by all the people on, be, behind it, or all the air, it makes this little turbine spin. And as it spins, this thing or the air will go on a pathway which goes like this and then slowly in the middle as shown here this is how it works the more air or the more people there's supposed to be if if there's 30 people in a five people room there will be more pressure or more people trying to find the exit so what would happen is it would spin around and around and around and slowly come to the middle in other words and equaling the pressure or how many people there are equals the RPM of this turbine. Meaning that the more people that go through this room, or if there's a hundred people in a five people room, let's say there are a hundred people that's, that's only in a room that's in a room only meant for five people. And let's say all those hundred people are cannot die. They're they're immortal. Immortal, so they cannot get squished to death. So all those 100 people, or 95, pe 95 out of the 100 people, will try to get out. So that's why, because there's more people trying to find the exit, the air or the people will run faster, and there will be more pressure. Meaning that this air or the people will run around and around and slowly find the middle. Since the air, there's more pressure. So basically, this thing would spin faster. And it could even give more torque. <clears throat> As shown by this little pathway right here. As you can see. As you guys can see. The more air there are. Or the more people there are. That's pushing through. The longer this angle is. So. In summary. If there's more people. And so in a five per people room. Or if there's ten. If there's a hundred people in a ten people. 10 person room and or if there's 50 people in a 10 person room the 50 people or 40 out of the 50 people will try to escape or there will be fit or there's if there's 100 people in a 5 people room 195 people will try to escape since there's more people trying to escape this angle will be larger than this one so this would be the 50 people room 50 people in the 5 people room. And this would be the 100 people in the 5 people room. And let's assume they're all immortal. Immortal. The 100 people, since there's more force or more push, more people pushing to the exit, this angle will be longer since there's more force being created. But hey, there's 5 people being wasted. For example, there's still 5 people in that room that don't want to get out. Well, that's what we call the wasted energy or kind of heat. We could just make the room smaller, right? We could put one people, we could put 100 people in that one people room. But the problem is that the material is not strong enough to withstand the force of can take 100 people in a five people room, five person room. For example, let's take you drop metal. Nothing happens to metal because it's so strong. Or there's so much material, or the density of the object is so high that it doesn't break. But glass, on the other hand, doesn't have a high density. In other words, there aren't enough atoms packed together in a small space. Like, let's take a pencil. 
there's a glass pencil or or let's take a, there let's take a mechanical pencil a mechanical pencil made of iron and there's a normal pencil if you try to take your fists and try to snap the mechanical pencil that's made of iron and the wood pencil in half well let's say you're 10 years old and you're trying to break the mechanical pencil in half i'm pretty sure you wouldn't be able to unless you are really strong but most 10 year olds cannot break lead pencils with their hands but would probably be able to break a wood pencil with your two hands or snap it in half why because wood isn't very strong while metal is strong that same applies to this scenario there's more there's more pressure or more people trying to get out but there's still or all those people are trying to get here to the middle or the hole but since all those people are pushing they're pushing the room while trying to get out like if 10 people are jam packed into a subway or a bus they're all pushing the outside of the bus or the subway and because that's happening the bus or the outside or the or the train or the outside of the outside part will have to withstand the 10 people pushing out since all those 10 people are big, big people, and they want to try and get out. And the door is the only way for them to get out. So once the door opens, all that pressure is going to go out, kind of like a balloon. There's so much air in the balloon, but as soon as you pop the balloon, it explodes. Why? It doesn't actually explode. All that air inside the balloon tries to get out. But because there's so many air, or so many people, trying to get out of that tiny little hole, the hole isn't big enough, and the balloon isn't strong enough to withstand so many people trying to get out. So the balloon eventually explodes, so all that air can get out, since the balloon isn't strong enough. That's another way of putting it. If the balloon was made of titanium, and if you put a hole in it, the air will slowly seep out. Since, the, since titanium is stronger than plastic, or light latex, or whatever balloons are made of, an iron balloon balloon wouldn't explode. <clears throat> but if it's so efficient, this this I don't know Nikola Tesla's pump or whatever it is. Nikola Tesla's Nikola Tesla's turbine. Well, if it's so powerful, then why don't people use it? Well, mainly because Nikola Tesla didn't want to profit off of his invention. He didn't sign any deals. He kind of just painted it and then just let it be because he wasn't interested in making money. But nowadays, there are three applications of when, it, when we use it. There's ventricular, or this is like, this is another way of saying pressurized air, or when you want to clean something and the air is being pressurized, wastewater plants, or desalination, or the petroleum industry. Another reason why we don't use it versus this one on the right is because in order to get this 97% efficiency, Tesla, well, he said or claimed, we need to spin this at 50,000 RPM. And to get materials that withstand such force, it's simply too expensive and costly versus something cheap. Well, it is going to be bigger, but it's cheap and isn't expensive of this, as this one on the left, to make. But it still works, though. But if you do work, it does work with just normal hard drives or normal material. It won't get as much efficiency as this one on the right, the newer one that people use in the 1960s. So, yeah, this is basically how it worked. Bye-bye.